So a couple of months ago, I decided to buy a new set of bookshelf speakers for my home audio system. The last time I bought stereo speakers was in the early 90s when I picked up a pair of fairly modest JBLs at Circuit City. So I figured an upgrade was long overdue. I did some research and these three models stood out to me in terms of size, price, and positive reviews. I didn't, however, find any direct comparisons between the three, so I decided to buy them all and test them out myself. Here we have the KEF Q150, the ELAC Debut 5.2, and the Klipsch RP500. They all have a five and a quarter inch low frequency driver, that's the woofer, and a one inch high frequency driver, that's the tweeter. I primarily drove them with an Onkyo 8050 stereo receiver, which provides 80 watts per channel at eight ohms. I work in live audio, so my ears are pretty good and I'm used to critical listening, but I am by no means an audiophile and I'm not familiar with a lot of speakers and other equipment designed for home audio. I listen to a lot of different genres of music through these speakers to see what they could do. When I'm installing or tuning a live sound system, there are a couple of tracks that are my go-to speaker test tracks. Tracks that I know very well from a sonic perspective and have heard on lots of different systems. One is Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits, and the other is a track called Besame Mama by Pancho Sanchez from his Conga Blue record. So the stereo image on all three were very good and exactly as expected when set up properly as a left-right pair, and when I was sitting in the sweet spot between the two. When sitting a bit off axis or off the center line of the pair, the Kef and the Klipsch still managed to give a nice image while the ELAC lost that dimension pretty quickly. The Kef overall seems to be the most forgiving when it comes to a decent stereo image from a range of listening positions, which I think is due to the tweeter being mounted directly inside the woofer. It's a clever design which basically means that no matter where your head is in relation to the speaker, the timing of the frequencies coming from the tweeter and the woofer will always reach your ear at the exact same time. While the Klipsch has a woofer and a tweeter that are physically separated, it does have some other sonic characteristics which allow it to have a great stereo image within a reasonably forgiving sweet spot, even if your position was a little closer to one side versus the other. So the thing that stood out to me the most about the KEF Q150 was the detail in the high end. It's really phenomenal. I could hear the scratch of the bow on violin strings, the attack of a drumstick on a ride cymbal, or the pick on a mandolin or a guitar string, and even the spittiness of Miles Davis's lips on his trumpet when listening to Kind of Blue. It was a real joy to hear those fine details. The low end on the KEF Q150 sounded more present and full than it was on the other speakers, but it wasn't quite as tight or as detailed as I was expecting, especially considering how well the speaker reproduces detail in the highs. The low end still sounded good and supported the music well, but it didn't sound great. However, what was really disappointing to me was the mid-range, especially when listening to vocals on pop and rock albums. It almost sounded like vocals and certain mid-range instruments had actually been pulled down in the mix, and I felt like the music sounded a little thin because of that. So we've got this beautiful detailed high end, this nice full low end, but something's missing right here in the middle. The ELAC 5.2 definitely had a more balanced and present mid-range, and when I flipped from the KEF Q150 to the ELAC, the vocals immediately sounded more present and forward in the mix. The low end definitely wasn't as full as it was on the KEF, but it sounded tight and detailed and overall nice. What was really lacking as compared to the KEF was the detail on the high end. This tweeter just wasn't able to recreate those finer details and textures that the KEF was able to. Which brings me to the Klipsch RP500. The high end detail on this speaker was also fantastic. If I had to be really, really nitpicky, I think the finest and most subtle details and textures in the high end were slightly more present when listening through the KEF. But the Klipsch still did a great job of giving me all of that detail, it was just a smidge less present. It was really only when I flipped back and forth between the two, concentrating specifically on the high end detail, that I give the edge to the KEF. When listening just to the Klipsch, I never felt like that detail was missing or that the speaker wasn't able to reproduce that detail, like I felt when I was listening to the ELAC. The low end on the Klipsch wasn't as loud or as present as it was on the KEF, 
but I found it actually to be tighter with better definition and detail, so I'd give the edge to the clips on reproducing those low-end frequencies. When I would switch from the clips to the kef, it sounded like someone turned up the low end a couple of decibels, but some of the punchiness and definition was kind of lost. The real star of the Klipsch is the horn-loaded high-frequency driver. What that means is that the tweeter is physically set back in the cabinet, and it's sending high frequencies through an actual physical horn. A lot of loudspeakers designed for live sound, whether they be inexpensive wedding DJ speakers, bigger point source speakers that are used for like churches, music clubs, and theaters, or giant line array systems you'd see in a medium to large concert venue or like a sports arena or stadium. The majority of all of those speakers have horn-loaded drivers because it allows the speaker to efficiently throw sound over distance and to a certain extent control where the sound waves go. So having a horn-loaded driver on these speakers really brought some presence and life back to the mid-range in a good, exciting way. It actually sounded like vocals and other mid-range instruments, guitars, horns, strings were actually physically closer to me. It added more dimensionality to the music I was listening to, so much so that when I switched back to the ELAC or the KEF, it sounded far away and somewhat flat like a two-dimensional painting on a wall. I felt like I had to sit forward to hear the music with the ELAC or the KEF, but with the Klipsch, it brought the music to me. It's not about volume, but it's more about presence and dimension in those mid and high mid frequencies. I found myself thinking about albums and songs I've loved for decades and wanting to listen to them on the Klipsch to see how good they sounded. So that's it, the Klipsch win. Thanks for watching.